Okay, so we're going to get started on this. So welcome everybody. I'm uh, Mike Felker. I'm the CIS graduate coordinator. I'm going to give a little bit of overview of the CIS uh, grad programs and talk a little bit about the CIS MSE program. Then we're going to have Dave Matusik talk about the MCIT program. Uh, Steve Lane talk about the computer graphics and game technology program. Uh, uh, Jamie uh, uh, Gorwitz talk about the robotics. And Rajiv Alora talk about the embedded systems program. Then we're going to have a couple of lab tours and that'll be it. Before we start, does anybody have any questions? Good. Okay. So we've got six grad programs. We've got the doctoral program. We've got the CIS MSc program. We've got the MCIT program. We've got the computer graphics and game technology program. We've got the robotics program. We've got the embedded systems program. For the academic year 2009, 2010, we had a little bit under uh, 300 grad students in all the programs. About 100 of them were PhD students and the rest were in the, in the various master's programs. Um, we're going to probably have a larger population for 2010, 2011. Uh, applications are for, for fall 2010 are, are getting close to about 300 above what they were last year. So I think we may have a, a bigger entering class um, this year. Um, so what I want to emphasize is just that on the CIS grad webpage, just the general webpage, we try to put as much information as we can. Um, that if, if you're looking for information like funding, we don't have any. But there are resources up there. There is no master's funding, unfortunately. We're trying to see what we can come up with, but at this point, we, we really don't have anything for master's students. So any kind of fellowship, anything I can find, I've, I've put up on, on this funding webpage. Um, the, uh, we sometimes occasionally have TA positions, pay TA positions at an hourly rate. Um, on our employment webpage, there are links to various uh, departmental, uh, university employment uh, services. We've got some info about the uh, pay TA listings. Right now, there's none. Uh, hopefully, there'll be some in the fall. Um, on the webpage, under, under administrative resources, we've got various forms. There's the computing guide. There's all, all these sort of things. I've been trying to get people to look at the master student, new master student resource page, and I'll, I'll be sending more email out about this. I, I need to send out email about registering, uh, but on this page, I've tried to get as many links as possible. Uh, there are links about getting your pen key, about getting your student ID, about getting your computer accounts, all that sort of thing. Um, for those who are interested in a specific area, Say if you're in the CIS MSc program and you're interested in um, machine learning, there is some info about various uh, research projects being done in ML uh, within the department. Uh, most of the research areas have weekly meetings with speakers. The department itself has, usually has a colloquium a couple of times a month we have a research seminar in the fall where faculty come up and talk about their um, research and sometimes uh, advanced doctoral students will also talk about their research. Um, the various labs have, um, have um, speakers come in. Uh, robotics generally has somebody come in almost every week, sometimes twice a week. Uh, some from industry, some from, from uh, most from academia. So what I'm going to do is just a really, really quick uh, overview of the CIS MSc program. So the CIS MSc program, there are uh, 10 courses for all the master's programs. The CIS MSc, it's four core courses and six electives. 
Out of the six electives, three of the electives need to be, I think we better go into the handbook, need to be CIS 500 level courses. And um, out of the three remaining electives, uh, students can, if they want, go somewhat outside CIS. We have various uh, courses outside CIS that have been approved as electives. This is, this is the list of them. Uh, CIS master students can also do uh, research either through uh, independent studies or possibly through um, a, a master's thesis if they do want to focus in a specific area. Uh, some, some master students uh, are interested in becoming doctoral students and I would say nobody should start a master's program with the expectation of becoming a doctoral student. We can definitely not guarantee it, but if you go into the administrative resources, there is a section that just talks a little bit about what master students would need to do to possibly be considered for transferring into the MSc program, excuse me, into the PhD program. Um, so that's basically it in a nutshell. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to Dave.